Hello and welcome to Lofty Pursuits and Public Displays of Confection in Tallahassee, Florida. This is Greg. Today we're going to make some orange roses for Valentine's Day. You will find this candy in two of our assortments, our Valentine's Day image candy assortment and our special crystal rose bouquet. The candy has reached 310 degrees now and it's time to cool it down and to do this we pour it on our candy cooling table. This is a specialized table designed just for this process. It's a water-cooled metal table and it ends up distributing the heat beautifully through its mild steel top. It also sprays water on the inside of the table to keep it cool. This table has a lot of advantages, but it's not really cooling the way you think. We're not trying to get the sugar cold, we're just trying to get it to approach room temperature. This absorbs a huge amount of heat out of the candy and puts it into the metal table. And most importantly, it does this very evenly throughout the entire piece of candy. The sugar has a lot of residual heat in it, and we're going to use this to our advantage. We're going to use the residual heat to end up boiling the water out of the food coloring. What we've dripped into this is food coloring. We're using a gel food coloring this time, which has a lot less moisture in it. It's much more concentrated in color, so it's going to make it easier for us to achieve this effect of the rose and the crystal. When we stir the food coloring into the hot sugar, the water boils off, and this keeps the candy dry. We're trying to keep the moisture content as low as possible. This maximizes shelf life of the product, and of course we want you to enjoy the candy and have a lot of time to enjoy it after you receive it. Even peach has a little acid taste to it, and we're going to be re-adding that acid taste with this white powder. No, it's not sugar that we're adding. And the citric acid that we're adding is going to add a little tang. It's going to be mixed only into the orange part of the rose. We're doing this that it doesn't disturb the crystal effect of the crystal candy. The candy is now rested long enough to cool down to a working temperature. We want it to behave a bit like a clay. It's still uneven in its heating right now and we're going to mix it together, let it drip a bit, and this is going to even out the temperature throughout each of the pieces. We're going to have three pieces here, an orange piece for the blossom of the rose, a green piece for the leaves of the rose, and we're going to do a clear background. We've made a wide selection of Valentine's Day candy this year. We've made our crystal roses, we've made our image candy conversation assortment. In the previous video, you saw us make our drop heart assortment, which are all in fruit and cream flavors. And we have our traditional cinnamon hearts as well. If you would like to try any of these for yourself, please go to our website, www.pd.net, and you can order them. We ship worldwide. You can even visit us in person if you ever make it to Tallahassee. Jake takes part of the orange and brings it to the candy pulling hook, but only part of the orange. You see, he needs two shades of orange to differentiate the petals. Because of this, he's going to pull part of the orange on the hook, and by folding it again and again, he's trapping in air bubbles. The air bubbles will reflect light, and the reflected light will make the candy look much whiter. So we're going to make a more pastel shade of orange, and it will contrast well with the darker orange that is currently sitting on the candy heating table. If after you watch Jake pull this, you go back to the beginning of the footage of him pulling candy, you'll see the color change pretty obviously. The rose has two parts, the inside spiral and the outside petals, and we'll need some candy for both. So right here, we're going to be dividing the candy in half. The two shades of orange will be flattened with a little rolling pin. This will give us a very even thickness so the spiral will be the same from one piece of candy to the other, or as close as we can do. They will then be stacked and then rolled into a thin spiral, which we will build the rest of the candy around. We make the petals by putting two layers of the colors together in a different proportion. Once they're together, we stretch them. This allows us to duplicate the pattern of the petals and we can make six petals easily this way, but it takes the full width of our candy heating table. While Jake makes the petals, I want to give a shout out to an old friend of ours, Doc Pop. You may remember him from our video number 53. He composed the music and performed it for that one. He's created a card game that behaves like a miniature battle game. 
He calls it Knife Shark, and he's currently funding it on Kickstarter. I've got a link for it down in the description. Check it out. Now that the pedals are ready, the spiral center can have them applied to them, and one at a time they go around the radius, becoming the orange rose. But when this is done, we still have to do the crystal wrap and the little leaves. I've been really enjoying making crystal candies and developing this new candy making technique. Next month you should see me working on something that I've been practicing for a while now. I'm working on making crystal violets, violet flavored of course, because there's a good tradition of violets being used as a candy flavor, especially in England. We've protected our clear candy so that it remains clear to the end and doesn't get hazy with a lot of air bubbles. And we take this candy and we spread it out and we use our spatula to cut grooves in it. These grooves are to accept the green leaves of the candy. We want the leaves to remain triangular throughout the entire process and this helps protect them as well. Once we've made the wrap, we can get our orange rose again and put it in the middle. Now that we've made this log of candy, we need to scale it down to rods. And to do this, we pinch off the top, tapering the candy down. It's really cool how this works. And in this particular case with our crystal candies, we know exactly where to pinch it. It's sort of like having x-ray vision and makes it a lot easier. One of the harder things to master is to learn how to scale the candy without distorting the image. Jake has gotten very good at this during his training. If you would like to try these candies for yourself, you can. Just go over to our website, www.pd.net. You can order them online, and we ship almost anywhere in the world. If you're in the United States, you can get them shipped to you by Valentine's Day. Last day shipping information will be located on our website. If you're ever in Tallahassee, we'd love to see you in person. We're easy to get to, located right off I-10 near the Thomasville Road exit. You might even be able to catch us making candy and see us do it in person. We do it right out front, which is why we call it Public Displays of Confection. We make candy a lot, but we don't have a regular schedule, and we don't make it all the time. But we are open from 7 a.m. till 10 p.m., serving brunch until 2 p.m. and starting serving ice cream at noon. We hope we can see you someday. Now that the rods are cool, we just have to cut the candy down to bite-sized pieces on our candle. And here is the final product. Now to blend it in with the rest of the image variety mix for Valentine's Day, our conversation set, as well as being blended into our crystal rose assortment. And yes, we made more than one batch of this. There'll be plenty in both assortments. Thank you for watching this video. I do appreciate it. If you like it, please subscribe to us here on YouTube and click on the little bell and that'll get you regular notifications whenever we post a new video. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and listen to us on our weekly podcast called Lofty Pursuit. I mean, what else would we call it? Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.